All right, so I'm pretty new into the Elixir world, so don't make fun of me when I inevitably make some level of mistakes, but you wanna know what sold me on using Elixir? It's really, really simple. So this is like mostly a generated file for when you're using Phoenix. I was learning, I was trying to read about Phoenix, which is like an equivalent of something like Laravel or, um, or Ruby on Rails, but for Elixir. The thing that really so, uh, uh, sold me is that you can define uh, a function, something like, you know, uh, a uh, function right here, and I can take in some parameters. Let's just say uh, param1 and param2, right? Right. So I can do that, and then I can do something in here, right? IO uh, puts uh, hello, there you go, right? Perfect, right? Well, I can take something in here and say, all right, well, if it starts with um, echo uh, param1, then I have this now. So this function, even though these two are both named the same, this one will first be checked, and if it matches this shape, I will get rest of param1, which will strip out the bang echo and all of param2. So this could be like my default case, right? I could have my default case here, and then I could have my you know special case here. So let's just say you're making say a Twitch bot, and you're like, hey, I want to handle some different chats. Okay, on a bang, on a bang s, I want to do this, right? On a bang echo, I'm going to do that. On a bang uh, g, I'm going to do this. Right, you could actually do all these like special cases right in the function definition, so you get like a very declarative feel to your programming. It saves millions of ifs. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do that's actually super super neat. And then the other thing that's really really nice when it comes to Elixir that I really want to try is: Have you ever also had the thing where you need to do something that's like I want to call like this happens all the time? And uh, here, actually, let's just switch back to Go for a second. Let's go to um, Speech. Speech has a very good example of this here. Let me find the example. Here we go. I'm going to make a request. I'm going to marshal my JSON. I'm going to make a new request with a context timeout. I'm going to do the actual request. I'm going to read the body. I'm going to create a temporary file. I'm going to save the temporary file. Like notice all of those error conditions are something that need to be handled in some sort of way, right? So each one of those has its own return statement. Whereas in this beautiful language, you can do something like with, and then I can go like, okay, and then say like, uh, you know, uh, uh, JSON, right? And let's pretend I have something like, there we go, JSON de decode, right? And then I can do that again. And so then I can go off and do like, um, you know, a result, right? I can do something like a request, which we can just say a request uh, uh, from internet, right? And pass that in. And then I can go, okay, uh, okay, um, uh, let's see, uh, temp. And then I can go uh, create temp, right, with my little audio thing. And then I can go in here and I can go, uh, okay. And then I can go file, which would be like, you know, file open, this thing. And then I can go, okay, write, right, uh, or okay, you know, just okay. And then do some sort of, I don't know. I don't know how to do file writes, but you can imagine write to file, right? I could write to file all those things, and then I can also get the body, right? I forgot to get the body, right? Um, okay. Body, right? Which could be like read body from the request, right? So I can do all of those. And the second one of those fails, I can throw it into an else statement, right? So then afterwards, I can do like my stuff in here, right? Whatever I want to do in here. And then I can do my else statement right here if it fails, which is also a match. So I can say, hey, if it fails for this one, we do this which I can do IO puts this reason. Or I can say, hey, also uh, error, you know, 400, right? 404, I can do this thing. I can go here and just say error 500, do that thing. I can then say, hey, catch all of them, this thing. That's pretty nice to be able to do these kind of like, just to walk through something very simply and then do these things also. It's like a promise chain kind of in, uh, what's it called, in, in TypeScript, except for you get to also pattern match on the error. You drop everything I work on. Prime just talk about Elixir. Yes, I am talking about Elixir. I was just talking about like the two things I really appreciate about like a Rust match, but Rust matches are really inconvenient constantly. Rust matches are not nearly as convenient. And you just got banned Ryan Winchester. Get wrecked. Right? So that's just what I find to be very nice currently about my Elixir understanding is that you have really awesome pattern matching you can put in functions also uh with functions you can do things like this you can do like a a when right hey when it falls under a certain condition right when uh param 2 is greater than 69 nice right 
So you can do like these little checks, right? Which is actually pretty sweet. So you can put all these like guards on them. Are they called pattern guard? I don't know what they're called, but they're fantastic. And so I've just been really loving this idea of being able to have these really declarative ways. You do, Like, I especially love this because this actually goes from, it feels like it goes from imperative programming into declarative programming, where it's like, I can now say, hey, this function runs under this specific condition, and I really like that, which means you can also do it for, say, a map. Let's say that you have some data, and you're like, hey, I expect, uh, I want to be able to grab out the mess, like, right? You can grab the entirety I can grab the entirety of param2 in, in that variable, but then I can also pluck out message. So that way message is a variable, right? I think you can also give it like a, like a specific one, right? I want to handle type hello. I believe you can do this. I'm still, I'm still in the process of learning all these things, but that's pretty cool. It's pretty based. It's super based. Isn't that like doing a check within the function and just return otherwise? Yes, but that's such a pain in the ass to do. I hate all those things where it's like, okay, uh, you know, if rest, uh, if, if rest, per, like, because then here's the alternative is param one. I'll have something that looks like this. If param one, you know, like you can imagine if this was Golang, it'd be like, what starts with, or, uh, has prefix, right? Right. If it doesn't even have that, well, then I'm going to return, right? Okay. Then if it has like, if then I have to go through, okay, is it a bang S? Okay. Is it a bang this? Is it a bang that? Is it a bang this? Is it a bang that? Right. Then I can, you know, then you're going to have to be like parts equals strings dot split n param two if, uh, or then you're going to switch parts zero, right. Then I'm going to have to go through each one of these different things. I don't want to have to like this instead just does it for me, right? It does all of that little thing for me. Am I becoming functional pilled? Well, I would like to say I'm becoming pattern match pilled. You know what else has pattern matching? Rust. But you can't define multiple functions in Rust. So there you go. Overloading pill, uh, overload, overloading pill based on uh, object shape. That is me. But Rust pattern matching is not real. Rust pattern matching is weird. There's some things about it that are very annoying. C would have been a perfect language if it had structural pattern matching. Yeah, I wonder how they would have done it, but yeah. Rust is pretty good at times, fast than C++. Yeah, I just don't care. At zero cost, I don't care. 99% of the things I solve do not need to be zero cost. Most of the things I solve are this. I have you guys, which is going to be like 1,000 or 2,000 of you people all pile into one of my programs at once. And so I just want to be able to build, I want to be able to launch something fast. I used to care. I did used to care because I also thought Rust was very convenient. But then I built enough programs in Rust over the course of two years to realize Rust is not convenient once you hit a certain level of complexity. All right, hey. So there you go. That's the reason why I have been enjoying this Elixir curve. I'm still very new into the Elixir world. So please don't judge me yet. I still haven't made up my mind about Elixir, but I'm loving my initial investigations. I have a really great project idea that I think is going to be an absolute banger on stream, and you guys are going to love it. Trust me on that one. It's going to be the best thing you've ever seen. I'll tell you my rough idea. My rough idea goes something like this. I'm going to track how fast I'm tapping, I'm, I'm using cursor tab, and if I don't use it fast enough, I execute git reset hard and I have to program a program in Elixir that allows all of you guys to appear on my screen in Vim is kind of where I'm landing. Could be a browser. It's all the same thing to me, but this allows me to, um, you know, this is going to allow me to, you know, I'm going to have to replay a bunch. Now, what I'm also thinking is that we can do something like every 30 seconds. If there's 30 seconds that a tab does not happen, I also have to give $1 to charity and then do a stream where I can't stop programming until I complete the website. So maybe I'm going to owe Maya $2,000 by the end of it. Could be kind of weird, right? Great idea. So anyways, that's my idea. So st 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 hey, stay tuned. That stream's going to happen hopefully here sooner than you think. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in talks trying to figure out how to make this happen. You'll owe $30,000. Who knows how much I'll owe, right? It's going to be nonstop. Pro pretty much what that means is I have to program all of Elixir in one shot. I have to constantly one shot huge portions of everything. It's going to be very fun. But I'm going to really learn. Thanks for watching. The name is the Prime Engine. Hey, is that HTTP? Get that out of here. That's not how we order coffee. We order coffee via SSH, terminal.shop. Yeah, you want a real experience? You want real coffee? You want awesome subscriptions so you never have to remember again? Oh, you want exclusive blends with exclusive coffee and exclusive content? Then check out Cron. You don't know what SSH is? Well, maybe the coffee is not for you. Terminal coffee in hand, live in the